Uh, I want to I postpone some uh, announcements to everybody. Those who are new for this kind of meetings which we are organizing. Uh, I have uh, asked the uh, legal office of my university in the very moment when you accept to uh, use a microphone it means automatically that you accept to be video recorded. Uh, we are video recording these lectures for several reasons. Uh, the most important is that we want really to prove that the money of the state which we are investing in these conferences is really spent for doing true scientific meetings. The quality can be debated. I think it is very good quality, but we believe that we are doing our best. Uh, another uh, announcement is that let us cross fingers and touch iron. I am very, uh, sometimes like Neapolitans, I believe in bad luck. This conference started with uh, six persons who could not come because of serious, very serious problems. So let's hope that uh, the bad luck uh, ended and nothing will happen. So let us be very careful. I drove very slowly while coming here, slower than usual. Uh, finally, uh, I want to say, I must tell everybody that I know it is uh, probably not very polite I'm sitting, but the meta material needed for replacing my crystalline is not yet produced. Uh, so I have a very complicated situation for my eyes and I can read something only if I have two spectacles and the presbyopy uh, spectacle is at this distance from the other glass. So this is the only way in which I can read something. So I must sit for this. Okay. Uh, I want to be a little bit polemical. I will be polemical, but I will try not to tell names. Uh, there is a trend, uh, by the way I have discovered that when I am polemical against somebody without telling the name, usually somebody else is very upset. <laughs> uh, this happened uh, very often in Italy but also outside Italy. This conference uh, with another style uh, has been presented in uh, Berkeley because also in the United States, data-driven uh, approach to science uh, is becoming popular. So without telling names, uh, so that many, uh, instead of having one enemy, I will have many, uh, I can tell you a story. A state decided to study the effect of earthquakes on buildings. A state whatsoever. Then, instead of using mechanics, the deformation of bodies, and the theory which we are teaching in structural mechanics or in general in mechanics, they decided to give many, many millions of euros to a group of engineers, experts in data collection. electronic engineers, expert in information engineering. The claim is that in this way, gathering many data, you can forecast the behavior of systems. Now, if these were not already a philosophy, which has been developed by pre-Epicurean philosophers. If these were not something which has been taught in my high school as an idea which is totally stupid, one could even think that there is a source of 
uh, truth. Okay. However, we know very well that only theory driven scientific activity or technological activity is useful. Okay, I quickly tell you that we have a journal of MEMOX, please send us papers, it is free for everybody. We are paying it with money from private enterprises. We have a website so you will find information about MEMOX Center and if you go to YouTube you will find a propaganda movie at the beginning. Somebody was against this naked <laughs> me and there are people who have nothing to do. They sent a letter to YouTube and this movie has been blocked for this knee. <laughs> okay? So we need uh, to lose our time for asking them where is the obscenity? Maybe this other knee, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, uh, you know, I had the big privilege of being a student in a very good high school in Napoli, whatever people from north say in Napoli, we always had very good schools, and with other names, you know, if you change the name, there is no difference. Instead of calling inductivism, you call it data-driven. And instead of calling falsificationism, you call it theory-driven, you have not changed the substance of the problem. The problem is, we want to invent new materials. How do we invent new materials? Somebody suggests to print one million specimens randomly and then to elaborate data. Okay. In my life, following the ideas of Epicurus and then Popper, I spend a lot of time with a good friend, Pierre Sepecher, in inventing, using a logical approach, a theory, for inventing a material which was doing something which we prescribed a priori. Now, I wait, maybe, maybe our pantograph is totally useless, it is only a game, theoretical, academic game for having fun. Okay. However, what we wanted, what we asked to these materials, this material is doing. And we didn't try by chance, randomly. We designed it for having a performance. Now, of course somebody said to me that I'm crazy and as I'm from Napoli, Neapolis, the new town, in the Gulf of Napoli, you can find many Greek cities, Palepolis, Neapolis, Pitegusei, Cume and Dikearchia. It was one of the biggest centers of Greek culture. So people tell me that I'm crazy about Greek words because I want to prove that everything has been done by Greek, by Greek, as I feel myself a descendant of Greeks. Okay, most likely my Y chromosome is from Longobards, so there is nothing to do with this. But think about it, every word used in science, old enough, comes from Greek. Hypothesis, it means a postulate, a conjecture made at the beginning of a theory which you assume to be valid without any proof. It is a kind of betting. This is the idea of theory driven. <coughs> which are the hypotheses which are good? So vain ta phenomena. This means save the appearances. If you have a theory which is producing predictions which are 
verified experimentally, then your hypotheses are good. So for instance, in the past, people were attacking me, telling, why are you writing papers about end gradient continua, integrating by parts? The answer is, I can predict something which is happening. Can you do the same? We will discuss this in some details. Ah, by the way, phenomena in English, phenomen in French, phenomeno in Italian, how do you tell it in, in German? Similar way. Why this word is what in Greek means appearances? Because these considerations were made at first in, in, in Greek. Pierre Duhem wrote a beautiful a book whose title is Sozain Ta Phenomena. To go back to this approach to science, you must wait Duhem and Carnap. Okay, now let us try to do quickly some examples, then I will go to our main subject. For instance, somebody says that Archimedes was not understanding anything. Why? Because for Archimedes, the surface of the sea sometimes is flat, sometimes is a sphere. And they did use that Archimedean science was very primitive. Okay, if you want to describe the floating of a boat, for you a flat surface is very good. If you want to study tides, then you must change your hypothesis. So depending on when you are applying your model, you must change your assumptions. I will show you that a given material at a certain length scale behaves in a way and in another scale behaves in another way. So what I want to say is that in order to save the phenomena, you need to use at a given length scale a different model. So there is no true model. There is a model which is valid at a given threshold, at a given length scale. So uh, the Earth is a material point in the motion around the Sun. It is a rigid sphere for season in astronomical geography, it is a rigid geo geoid in advanced astronomical geography, it is a deformable geoid or a multiphase deformable solid, depending on which kind of phenomenon you want, you want uh, to live. Okay, then I tell in a polemical way that Newton was most, more primitive than Archimedes. Newton believed to have the true theory. Okay, while Archimedes knew that there is a theory for one phenomenon and a theory for another phenomenon. And depending on the phenomenon, you change your model. In a sense, Ar uh, Newton is a kind of religious uh, person. He believes to be able to reach truth a priori. Archimedes writes that I believe that some, either of my contemporaries, of my successors, will, by means of the methods when once established, be able to discover other theorems in addition. What he's doing? He takes a floating body, he assumes that it is in equilibrium, then he proves that for being in equilibrium, this floating body must have a barycenter somewhere. The barycenter is somewhere if and only if the integral between a and b x squared dx is equal to b cubed over 3 minus a cubed over 3. And then says, I will prove in a mathematical, mathematically rigorous way this result. Because experiment is not giving me any theorem. So he has clear the idea that experience and model are different. Okay, so after having said this, I try 
simply to tell you, data driven shopper 2 million years ago, hand X 9000, this tool 3000, so the Ballista 400 before Christ, the Syracuse, do you know that the Syracuse was a metallic boat bigger than three football fields which has been built by Archimedes and sent as a gift to Alexandria, metallic boat, okay? The Antikythera mechanism 150 before Christ, data driven, theory driven. Do you want data driven theories? Okay, pulling my own leg, I placed a pantograph there. So, what Lucio Russo in his Forgotten Revolution brilliantly tells us is the following. We see natural phenomena. We build a scientific theory with a set of relationships. Then we cross the border of not known phenomena, we start building new ideas which correspond to scientifically designed objects. So this is what we want to do. We want to design a structure which is elastic, remains elastic when it has an elongation of 50%. This is what we have in mind. So, when you have these exotic materials, you cannot use Cauchy theory. Cauchy theory is a theory which starts from some assumptions which are not verified all the time. So, the, the reason, philosophical reasoning I started is to prove that in Western civilization we know that there is no theory of everything. Now, I don't know why we want to use Cauchy theory all the time. There are some limits, so I call it Cauchy straight jacket. What is the crucial point is that if you have complexity at micro level, you have a big problem when you want to introduce a macro level model. This is the first thing. Only in some assumptions, having accepted some assumptions, micro level complexity can be modeled at macro level by Cauchy continua. Then there is a possibly not completely true dichotomy Metamaterials as artificially designed materials and natural materials, one could say that natural materials are very well dis uh, modeled with Cauchy Continua and metamaterials are invented in such a way that Cauchy models are not true. This is a very brutal approximation, but for discussing we can accept it. Then you have seen by, in the presentation by Albrecht, that when you use higher gradient theory, stress is not a second order symmetric tensor, and strain is not only a second order stress uh, symmetric tensor. By the way, I disagree with the decomposition of Albrecht, who uses a very complicated one. Uh, Piola is using uh, F transposed F, what we call C, uh, Cauchy Green tensor. Stigler hypothesis is true also in this case. You know, Stigler law is that if something has the name of somebody, this somebody did not invent it, including Stigler law, which has been invented by somebody else. Okay. Uh, I have found Cauchy Green. Tensor in Piola book before Green.
and Cauchy. But this is not a, a true uh, uh, question. The true question is that you can represent stress with a sequence of tensors, which are all the dual in power of C, grad C, grad second C, up to grad N C. So actually, uh, I think that what Albrecht is presenting you is a very good step towards popularization of the theory of Piola. He's doing a little bit what has been done by Navier when he decided to teach balanced laws instead of variational principles à l'école polytechnique for passing the message in a better way. So, it is at the end not so bad that many people now are uh, thinking about what uh, can be done in more general setting. I claim that more many engineering applications are waiting for more powerful theoretical and numerical modeling. Okay, this is an example of aluminum. Okay. This is a pantographic structure about which we will talk later. Okay, now I try to go. Not too late. Not too late. No, but I am calculating. When should I end? I have 20 minutes now. Okay, but yeah, I, I, I can do it. Okay, so. Uh, there is technology before nature or there is nature before technology? You are thinking or you are developing your ideas, you are thinking before experiments or you are thinking your theories after having seen the experiments? Okay, I, I think that metamaterial has a mission, metamaterial theory has a mission statement. What we are doing is, we choose governing equations, then we ask ourselves, can I build something whose governing equations are those which I decided a priori? Okay, in our small research with Pierre we spend a lot of time telling, asking ourselves the following questions. Can we find a deformation energy depending only on the second gradient of displacement? Which for sure cannot be a Cauchy uh, continuum model. And the answer was yes, and I will try to show you uh, these advantages. Okay, now I will show you a structure. Somebody could tell us you are wrong, you can model it going down to a lower scale, you can model it with Cauchy models. Now the question is, what happens if you use a lower scale? You need millions or hundred thousand millions of degrees of freedom. So numerical computation will become impossible. You know, Ptolemy was inventing a system for calculating with an analogic computers the trajectories of planets. Probably Hipparchus knew the theory which has been rediscovered by Newton. Ptolemy was using a computer for calculating trajectories. In Middle Age they confused the computer with the model. So, when Copernicus rediscovered the ancient model, the efficacy of Ptolemy computation was bigger, but he needed many epi cycles. While the ideas of Copernicus were giving you a model simpler. So this is the reason for which, you know, there is Price who wrote contra Copernicus in the sense that if you must believe 
to experimental evidence available at the age of Copernicus, Copernicus was wrong. Okay, he has the, the, the model of Copernicus has been accepted because it was simpler. Now, I'm preparing what I want to tell you. Homogenized models for metamaterials are, look at this satellite photograph, and then you produce an homogenization, which is a map. So homogenization is more or less a process like that. Now, pantographic structure, the lizardous fixation, maybe. However, what you can get is that they are light, resilient, tough in fracture, geometrically simple, easily controlled at the micro scale, not expensive to manufacture. We have built them with a standard 3D printer. But the true reason for which I'm interested in them is that they are the simplest microstructure system producing a second gradient energy model in the homogenized limit. You know, when I presented the result by uh, which were cleanly presented to you by Albrecht, being a young researcher, now I'm becoming a, an old fossil, okay, a little bit absent-minded, I was attacked continuously because the Trusdellian orthodoxy claimed that these materials are not existing. So, what we did, we printed a structure like this, where these pivots here are very slim, so that torsional, uh, at micro level this pivot is under torsion, at macro level it is in shear, torsional stiffness of this animal is very low, you can estimate. And what we get? We get this very nice uh, numerical simulations in perfect uh, agreement with the experimental one using beam theory for each fiber. Then we, okay, these are measurements. Then we did a bias extension test and what we discovered that you have breaking after a lot of deformation with this very nice pattern. If you calculate the area under this plot, you have that this amount of energy, which is the energy needed for breaking this material, is comparable with the elastic amount of energy under this first part of the plot. So this animal is very tough. But look, you have 60 Newton at the first breaking, and the total break comes to more than 90 newtons. The specimen is long, 110 millimeters, and it goes out of elastic regime at nearly 60. Okay. So this is what I already said. If instead of using a simplified model, you are stubborn and you introduce a Cauchy continuum model, your length scale is very small. You need millions of finite elements. You need minimum two days of numerical simulations with our computer, and you need to have enough finite elements to have in one pivot many degrees of freedom. In this way you can catch the 80% of deformation energy which is trapped there. Okay. On the other side, you homogenized it. Your length scale is not small compared with the pivot. Your length scale is big. You include two pivots. You need a second gradient model at this length scale. And then you get in 20 minutes exactly the same result. So there is no true model. You choose a small length scale, 
you make a lot of computations, you get a good result, but you need a lot of computation time. You choose a longer length scale, Cauchy theory is not applying anymore, but you get a better, a quicker computation time. Okay, I, I will skip the particular study you can make introducing a strongly nonlinear model in which the pantograph is represented with inextensible fibers so that you can write a very quick code. This was a work which I made with Massimo Cuomo and the numerical simulations which last few seconds are very close to experimental evidence and the shapes you get are very similar to those you can get. Uh, uh, with the other model. Now I want to tell you something. Look at the beam which uh, uh, is yellow in this picture. This is an experiment which we made in Wolfgang Müller lab in Berlin. Can you claim this is a beam in small deformations? I mean, this is clearly a beam in large deformations. This is the model, you are uh, extensible fibers, the model you can develop for getting some predictions. Uh, we, we have also these experiments uh, where we are trying to extract one fiber out of our pantographic structure and we prove experimentally that everything works very well with measurements. I want to stop a little bit. Distribution of deformation energy. This is the total energy. Then you have stretching energy, bending energy, pivot torsion energy. At the macro level, stretching energy and pivot torsion energy are first gradient energies. Bending energy can be represented only with second gradient models at macro level and this energy is not negligible so you cannot expect that you will get anything good with, without second gradient theories at a suitably macro level. Now how can we prove definitely that higher gradient theories are necessary? when you kill completely the shear energy at micro level. So we could design with 3D printing. There is a reviewer who said that all this is a useless theoretical game. Uh, I want to tell you that Heron of Alec Alexandria built a small uh, vapor steam engine which proves the, f the fact that you can build steam engines. So consider this as a small game for proving that the concept is feasible. So with a small run-in process for French speakers, rodage, rodaggio in Italian, okay? You print this animal, you pull it a little bit, and then these hinges become Perfect. Okay, look, this is the design of these hinges. For those who like true engineering, this is the 19th century design, which we are still using, with the standard techniques of standard drawing. Okay, with this. Uh, object for avoiding any discussion I decided I want to model it with an Enki type uh, Piola Enki discrete model so I don't want to homogenize then to make it discrete this is a mental disorder you are a discrete system you homogenize then you make it discrete another time why? you introduce some hinges 
between different fibers with a rotational spring and many internal hinges between two interconnecting hinges. This is a beautiful mechanical understanding, theory driven numerical simulations. Okay. Probably the same reviewer who said that second gradient theories are useless wrote that we are using a, a black box approach without any physical understanding. Okay. There is a beautiful poem by Esopus. In Latin is superior stabat lupus inferior agnus. The wolf was drinking a, a upstream, the sheep was drinking downstream, and the wolf tells him, you are making my water dirty. Okay, whatever you do, you are wrong. Okay. I strongly believe that this modeling is not, cannot be discussed, okay? especially if the system is the one I'm showing you. Now, let's go back to our different models for the same physical object. Look, this is polyamide or it is a set of grains? To get polyamide, you must go very down. So depending on your length scale, the physical system is having different mechanical behavior. Okay, you pull bias test the perfect inches material, and what you get is a completely new behavior. Now I must thank my good friend Victor Eremeyev. He was so patient that he accepted to follow the crazy mechanical considerations which I developed with Claude Boutin and David Stegman for writing some equations which were considered pathological. You know, in the 12 those table in the marble, it is written by God, your energy must be coercive in the first gradient of displacement. If your energy is not like that, then you are wrong. So this material, once modeled at macro level, has no shear energy. So the first gradient energy is pathological. Victor digging in the glorious Soviet school results, poor Victor, found a very elegant theorem conceived before pandographic structures which can be adapted for proving existence and uniqueness of shapes of this material in linear elasticity. Now we want to generalize it. Okay. So Victor, you must do it now. Okay? I know. You know. <laughs> okay. Now, with the discrete code developed by, developed by Emilio Turco, we got this first computed, this is the comparison with measured. I don't know why uh, I didn't place another picture showing that when you increase the intermediate pivots between two interconnecting pivots, this energy goes exactly to the experiments. Now, for completing my presentation, I, will, I want to tell you that with uh, François Hild uh, from Ecole Normale Supérieure Cachan, we developed a very nice uh, digital image correlation to prove that the numerical simulations and the experimental simulations are in perfect agreement. Always the same very nice referee said that he can evaluate deformation de visu. 
which is a leading way for telling, looking at the picture. So I would like to ask this referee to tell me how he can do it because I will hire him. Instead of using complex computer simulations and pictures, I can use his eyes to check if the simulations are, in compa are comparable with numerical codes. Okay. Useless to say that Francois was very upset for this, but he didn't want to say anything in written form. Okay, so these pictures show that the, the agreement, I, I, I must go quickly, but the, these are very nice pictures to show that we can do, we can do very nice agreement. Okay, now, just to show you how back and forth theory and experiments are obliging you to develop new theories. Euler formulated the Elastica theory at the end of 18th century. Do you believe there is something new in this theory? If you study pantographic structures, you have beams in large deformations, you write the energy, you load it with a uniform field, you write the equations theta is the angle of the tangent of the elastica, you develop a complicated Leoni da Tonelli model, direct methods for, for this, you prove that the energy functional has a minimum in the right energy space, okay, you find Euler-Lagrange equations, you prove several theorems about the absolute minimum, you use a shooting technique, so you impose initial data in zero, so theta prime in zero, and what you find? You find the main branch of absolute minimum, starting from a value, you find another set of solutions, totally new. This is what we call pending beam. This is a new solution. The same reviewer said, it is strange. Nobody found, found, uh, somebody has found it before. <laughs> okay, tell me who. I phoned to Victor, because Victor can read. Russian. You know, everything has been already written by a Russian before. So I, in Russian. Yes, because you know, Moscow is the third Rome, the second Constantinople. This is a mental disorder which we are inheriting one after the other. So I asked Victor, do you have found in any Russian book this solution? He said, no. So I'm still waiting, somebody showing me a stable solution of a uniformly loaded beam showing this. Uh, remark that here you have a clamped, clamped arch and here you have this solution mirrored. So when this energy is bigger than this, the energy which you could get and uh, wrapping this beam, you are back, uh, you can have this solution. Now this is, wait a second, this is a very nice numerical simulation used using very simple code and standard dissipation, hanky type discrete numerical simulations proving numerically that that is a really stable configuration. But I don't know why this picture is, the vertical is here. Okay, for graphical reasons we are showing it horizontally. This experiment has been made by, uh, uh, please Jarko, tell me the name. Jay Barbaruri. Okay, a very nice product of Soviet edu education is from uh, North Africa, but he studied in Soviet Union. What is the book? 
<laughs> you cannot know it. it. It is a Russian book. So, using the interaction between experiment and theories, you can discover new phenomena and using shooting you find also this shape it is unstable we never found it neither numeric numerically not experimentally but we have not yet proven it is unstable mathematically okay i am ready to conclude scientific model never coincide with reality they are always a partial description so you can tell me second gradient theories are useless you do it smaller Cauchy theory are very good I don't know if that 3d printed polyamide of a lot of grains can be modeled with a Cauchy model maybe you must go at the level of smaller uh, scale okay what should we do given a problem given a set of phenomena we must choose the right model what is the right model the one which can describe and predict phenomena and which gives you mathematical problems we can, which can be solved uh, is this new Aristarchus, Archimedes, Copernicus, Galilei, Kepler, Hooke, Piola, Poincaré and Levi Civita they all knew this UM we said already so I think it is rather not a modern against ancient uh, dispute you have Epicureans who think that the theory comes first and inductivist, uh, inductivists who believe that gathering many data you can do something I, I want to conclude with a, a consideration do you think that between uh, 250,000 years ago to Hellenistic science, human beings were less gifted and starting from that moment we became more intelligent or Greek science gave us the theories and this is the reason for which technology is being developed much more quickly so with this rhetoric question, I really end. Thanks very much. Thank you, but if we want full funding, we have a bit of data driven still. <laughs> uh, this, you are perfectly right. <laughs> okay, we want to ask something. You did not tell us uh, the constitutive law of finite uh, strain gradient elasticity that you used for your uh, simulation of the pantograph. Yes, we, we use uh, uh, um, an energy in which you have only second derivatives along the fibers in the reference configuration of displacement and unfortunately the coefficient of this has first gradient deformation so you have an energy, I've shown it in, in other uh, presentation, but I, I can show you. But the idea is the following, you take the beam energy and you homogenize. So you have curvature in plane curvature. So plate theory is not good enough, because plate theory has only first gradient, standard plate theory, has only first gradient in plane of in-plane displacements in the energy. So in this model you need second derivatives of displacement of in-plane displacement in the energy. So this is the trick.
Can I just ask a question regarding your millions degrees of freedom simulation? I was just wondering, was this based strictly on linear elasticity or was there something else? No, of course, uh, Wolfgang, we uh, started betting because nobody knows the constitutive equation of printed polyamide. Exactly. So what we did, we started with a, a non-linear uh, Saint-Venant model where you have only geometric non-linearities, then we tried several Ogden type materials and then we tried uh, several uh, non-linear constitutive equations. Uh, I think that with Pierre Sepecher we tried a two uh, powers coefficient uh, Ogden type material and we have some numerical simulations about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a numerical homogenization uh, investigation which has to be performed. Yes? When you model uh, your pantographic structure um, using Cachet and Fiddle, for the beams. Did you use the solid elements, for the beam elements, for this? We did everything. Okay, I tell you a secret. Consol has no reliable beam theory element. It is good only for linear elasticity. There is a strange corrotational sounding which is not working, it's giving wrong results. Uh, so we used beam elements only for linear elasticity. Then we used Anki type beam elements, springs and bars, which gives you a perfect agreement with few seconds. And this, of course I don't want to diminish the work of Emilio Turco, he did everything alone with MATLAB. So it is feasible by a, a single human being, although very clever, uh, using MATLAB in a finite amount of days. And then we used Cauchy 3D elements, so every pivot has 20 finite elements. And then we used macro second gradient theory. And we got very similar results, of course, my dear friend. If you want that one pivot is strangely deformed, only micro theory of Cauchy can tell you. I mean, if you want an information at the length scale of half a millimeter, what can you do? You must go at the length scale of half a millimeter. So it depends on what you want to do. This is the message. Why would we um, predict a strange using? Ah, by the way, sorry, sorry, there is a group, not only Jarco, but also a, a Florent Morin, I think, recently submitted a paper which I'm handling, he used NURBS for modeling beams. So he uses very complicated, sophisticated beam theory which works in large deformations for beam theories. But if you have many beams, one close to the other, it doesn't work. Okay, I think we have to stop here. Thank you again.